did you and, and President Trump actually have a discussion on this request from Mayor Bowser? I had a meeting with President Trump on the 3rd of January concerning some international threats. And at the very end, he asked if there were any requests for National Guard support. And I informed him of Mayor Bowser's request. Mr. Miller, to, be, to clarify that point, did you tell the president about the mayor's request or did President Trump ask if there were requests? He asked if there were requests. What was the president's response to you with regard to the request made by Mayor Bowser? Fill it and do whatever was necessary to protect the uh, demonstrators uh, and uh, that were executing their constitutionally protected rights. Okay. This is a, this is a, a very recent reversal of your, of your testimony. Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Democrats on Wednesday grilled former Trump officials at a House hearing on the response to the January 6th attack, with members arguing former acting defense chief Christopher Miller and former acting attorney general Jeffrey Rosen failed in their capacity to defend the Capitol and the Constitution. Or you just plain froze and were indecisive while people were being, people were being injured, killed, while hundreds of rioters breached the Capitol, and a nation was traumatized. Miller said he was reticent to deploy troops on that day for fear it would look like a coup, but didn't appear to own up to any shortcomings. I stand by every decision I made on January 6th and the following days. I want to emphasize that our nation's armed forces are to be deployed for domestic law enforcement only when all civilian assets are expended and only as the absolute last resort. But Miller did say that he spoke to the president ahead of January 6th, and Trump was interested in a boosted National Guard presence, but only to protect his supporters. I had a meeting with President Trump on the 3rd of January concerning some international threats, and at the very end, he asked if there were any requests for National Guard support, and I informed him of Mayor Bowser's request. Mr. Miller, to, be, to clarify that point, did you tell the president about the mayor's request or did President Trump ask if there were requests? He asked if there were requests. What was the president's response to you with regard to the request made by Mayor Bowser? Fill it and do whatever was necessary to protect the uh, demonstrators uh, and uh, that were executing their constitutionally protected rights. At issue, why there was a delay in requesting reinforcements as a mob of Trump supporters violently flooded into the Capitol and whether Trump was involved in that delay. Did President Trump, as the commander in chief of the U.S. Armed Forces, call you during the January 6th attack to ensure the Capitol was being secured? Mr. Miller. No, I had all the authority I needed from the president to uh, fulfill my constitutional duties. Did you speak with President Trump at all as the attack was unfolding? No, I did not. I didn't need to. I had all the authority I needed and knew what had to happen. I knew what had to happen. I can tell you the House floor was never breached and it was not an insurrection. Meanwhile, Republicans downplayed the events of that day, defending President Trump and his supporters and focused their ire on Democratic lawmakers. Nancy Pelosi, I just don't know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. 19 people died during BLM riots last year, and yet we're going to discuss today as if none of that happened. Wednesday's hearing came right after Republican House members stripped Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney of her leadership position for confronting President Trump over his false claims of election fraud, the very same big lie, she said, that fueled the insurrection on January 6th. Third, you informed the president that Mayor Bowser requested National Guard support. And according to page 11, of your written statement, the president said to give the mayor the support she requested, correct? Yes. On January 6th, according to your statement, you became aware sometime on or before 1.30 p.m. that day that the rioters breached the perimeter of the Capitol, right? Yes. According to a DOD-created timeline, at 1.34 p.m., Mayor Bowser called Army Secretary McCarthy to request, quote-unquote, additional forces to respond to the Capitol. 
According to page 8 of your statement, at 3.04 p.m., so one and a half hours later, you authorize mobilizing the D.C. National Guard and providing these additional forces. That constituted a gap of 1.5 hours. During that 1.5 hour gap, why did you and the secretary disobey the president's order to give the mayor the support she requested? She already had the support she requested. What's your question, sir? Sir, she requested additional support. You see this mayhem oh. and, and pictures of insurrection on January 6th? She requested additional support from you. And during that 1.5 hours, either you disobeyed an order given to you by the president to help Mayor Bowser, or the president changed his order and asked you to delay support, or you just plain froze and were indecisive while people were, being, people were being injured, killed, while hundreds of rioters breached the Capitol, and a nation was traumatized. Sir, because there, of your actions, There were 8,000 badged and credentialed police officers on duty. And the you United, weren't there. The United States Armed they were, Forces should only be used AWOL. as a last resort. You were AWOL, Mr. Secretary. You were AWOL. You, well, reclaiming my time, you, you, I'm, you, I'm you, just you, asking you, you the same question you've answered before. Uh, did, did the president's remarks incite members to march on the, uh, people in the crowd to march on the Capitol, or did they not? Well, he clearly uh, said, offered that they should march on the Capitol, so it goes without saying that his statement resulted in okay, that. Okay, I'm, I'm I, reclaiming I was, my time. Let, let, me just, let me just share with the committee what you have said before. These are, this is your quote. This is your quote. Would anyone, would anybody have marched on the Capitol and tried to overrun the Capitol without the president's speech? I think it's pretty much definitive that would not have happened. I and think in, now in I your would written say testimony, that, that was not in, a unitary in your written, factor at all. What's that? I would like to offer, I have reassessed, it's not the unitary factor at all. There was an, it seems clear there was an organized conspiracy with assault elements in, in your, place. In your the written testimony called, for today, this, this reclaiming my time again, for your written testimony for today, for today, this morning, you stated the following about the president's quote. I personally believe his comments encouraged the protesters that day. That's that was this morning. So, so this is a, this is a, this is a, a very recent reversal of your, of your testimony. Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. You're ridiculous. Thank you for your uh, your thoughts. I also want to highlight. No, wait a minute. Reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time. You also said, and I quote, the question is, did he know he was enraging the people? That's a different matter. And I understand your reluctance to to try to portray what was in the president's mind. But. In, in multiple occasions, your testimony, both written and, and oral, you said that, you said, and again, without the president's speech, people would not have marched on the Capitol and tried to overrun the Capitol. And that you wrote I, this morning, I personally believe his, his comments encouraged the president that day. So you There's understand how, how not believable uh, your, your, your new testimony, your new version of testimony that was apparently created between the time you wrote your testimony this morning and, and when you came before the committee today. There, there's a difference between marching back. The gentleman's on the time Capitol has expired. and assaulting you, the Capitol. You, you may answer that. Okay. There's a difference between marching on the Capitol and assaulting the Capitol. That's the d delineation I'm trying to make despite the partisan attack that I just was subjected to.